uh, released today, my main concern was that there the is no vision, the there Mexico. is no Jason common value, Sanders there is no goal that is really articulated in this letter we aside from we need to change. change. And nice for me, what that says is, you know, I do think that we got uh, sent to Congress on a mandate to change how government works, to change uh, what government even so looks like. But uh, if we are not over. on the same page about changing the systems and the values and how we're going to adapt as a party for the future, then what is the point of just changing our party leadership just for the sake of it? What I'm hearing from you is that you don't feel like there's an ideological or substantive sort of agenda-driven core of this objection. No, I mean, if anything, I, I think that what it does is that it creates a window where we could potentially get more conservative leadership. And when you actually look at the signatories, it is not necessarily reflective of the diversity of the party. We even after we have about 16 signatories, uh, 14 of them are male. Uh, there are very few people of color in the caucus. There are very few, there's very few ideological diversity. It's not like there are progressives that are signing on. It's not like you have a broad-based coalition. Uh, so I I find it um, you know I I don't I'm not totally bought into the concept. You um, Justice Democrats, Justice Dems, which is a group that had sort of worked with your campaign early on, um, you and they had sort of announced your plans to continue the process of primarying incumbent Democrats, which is how, of course, you got to Congress. I wonder, like, how that, how does that color the relationships you have with the incumbents? Well, I think what's important to articulate what Justice Democrats is about is really, it's not, their mission, their mission isn't we're going to primary Democrats. Their mission is we're going to support working class candidates to run in midterm elections. And so they have supported and endorsed candidates in red to blues, in open primaries, and but they do not shy away from, uh, from actual primaries and, and blue races either. And so, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if it really changes much because incumbent Democrats support and endorse against other incumbents all the time. You had Dan Lipinski earlier this year. That's what incumbency is. That is, you know, part of the club. And so, uh, so, but you have people that also support other primary challengers to incumbents as well. Like Again, we had Dan Lipinski this year where you have Kirsten Gillibrand, you have Camilla Jayapal that came in and said we need change in this community. So I don't think it's anything uh, too out of too, too, I don't think it's a departure from precedent at all. Uh, but I also think that we need to realize that at, at least for me and what I tell my community is that we don't, once we get elected to Congress, we don't own these seats. We rent them from our communities. And we have to make our case every single time and that's not going to be I'm saying this to you as as uh, an incumbent to be yeah um, and I realize that, that 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 means I hold myself to that standard as well, but I think it makes our democracy healthy. Follow up on that. You, you so know, a lot of what a congressional office does, obviously, in, in a district Miami is like Social Security disability payment was, mm -hmm. got held up in some logistical mm -hmm. problem, and I'm calling up my member of Congress to be like, help me out. Like, that stuff that my, my understanding is you don't have that much experience with that. Well, I mean, I know you worked in Tip Kennedy's office, yeah. but like, are you, how are you thinking about setting that part of this yes. operation? Yeah, and actually, um, the constituent services was what I did in the late Senator Kennedy's office, and that's where I really learned how important it was for us to have really robust constituent services because that is the real interaction that an everyday person has with their elected official. They say, hey, my Medicare isn't working out. Hey, my uh, my visa application for my fiance isn't, uh, is getting blocked. What can you do? And so really it, cutting through that red tape of government bureaucracy in order to serve our constituents so is a huge service that we can have, nowadays, and it's something that uh, I'm we're really looking forward to building out in an innovative in way. Um, in your district, I think, includes or adjacent right? to the new proposed Amazon headquarters, right, in Long yes, Island it's City? It's adjacent. Um, so obviously there'll be ripple spillover effects. You've been quite mm -hmm. outspoken against it. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you can put Ball together a political to coalition to block it? Now as they come well, up on you know, for me, it's, it's not just about me governing 
top down. The reason that I spoke out on this issue to begin with is because organizers and, and residents of my community were busting down our doors saying you need to say something about this because we are threatened with homelessness, we're, we're threatened with rising rents. We have seen this happen in San Francisco and Seattle. We've seen it with Foxconn, Foxconn uh, in, in the Midwest as well. And so I, I because I don't, because I, I did not accept any corporate lobbyist contributions in my campaign, I feel like I have the liberty to advocate directly for what the community is telling me. And if this is what the community is telling me, it's my responsibility so to voice hold, those concerns. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democratic Congresswoman-elect here in New York. Come back in time. Thanks for Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. After you the penalty, it's called the videos we're putting out. You can click subscribe just below me. And yeah, he's going to be taken to down with a marker videos. on the field. So let's see about the call. Illegal block in the back. Offense. So this will be accepted as he moves the offense backwards. now for Brady. And an alley to run. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. 13 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it a second down. And him running the football is not something that defenses spend a lot of time preparing for, but this guy has a survival instinct and a knack for knowing when exactly to do it. Second down, here's Crowell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. The safety, Rashad Jones, brings him down. And let's run through the Dolphins' defense. When Kiko Alonso first made it to the NFL, all I could think about was remembering him playing in college. And there's a wildness to him. There is also control as well. Always around the football. And when he arrived, you knew that he was there. And then he'd fool you at times, too, because he'd pick off a pass and return it for a touchdown. you say, where did all that speed come from? I thought he was a total package coming out of Oregon. From the gun on third down, Brady. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. On now is the kicker, Jason Myers, for the field goal try. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And Myers able to knock it through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3-0. So our initial drive this afternoon results in three. Not sure that that's a statement necessarily, but getting points on the road, never a bad thing. You're exactly right about that. I, I love how you framed it, right? Not sure it's a statement, but at the same time, you're putting something out there, aren't you? Letting them know, hey, we came to play today. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Miami Dolphins, 4-2 and two so far this season as we get set to see what they can do here on offense. But in South Florida right now, there's a new phrase. It's Brocktober. Brock Osweiler, his first Miami start in place of Ryan Tannehill, who was out with a shoulder injury. How about the game he had? 28 of 44, a career-high 380 yards, 266 of them in the second half when he led Miami back and forced overtime. 
and led to Jason Sanders hitting a 47-yard field goal in the final seconds of overtime to give the Dolphins the victory. Look, Brock Osweiler did not see himself in Miami when he signed that big contract with the Houston Texans. He's had a lot of downs. What a big time up for him on Sunday. Back home against Detroit this week. Chance to get to 5-2. And, and incomplete to open things up. Danny Amendola, that was the intended target. And now it's second down. So look now at the Miami offense. One thing I've always enjoyed about watching Kenny Stills play is his passion for the game. You can tell he absolutely loves being out there. He has a ball when he's out on the football field. But the other thing, he can fool you. He looks like a slot receiver but runs great routes from the outside and creates big plays downfield. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. Hurry up, here we go! 319! 319! Second and 10, it's Osweiler again. Then he finds Danny Amendola. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 13 and a Dolphin first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Carry for Frank Gore back home here in Miami. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. And a look now at how the Jets line up defensively. When you're the number six pick overall in the NFL draft, big things are expected out of you. And finally, Morris Claiborne is starting to deliver on some of that promise. Played 15 games in 2017, the most he played since his rookie year, and had his best season to date. Ability to cover, ability to tackle, all the things we saw coming out in the draft in 2012, we're now seeing on the field. Here we go now. Blue on second down, Osweiler shedding through the defense. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Call it a gain of five. And they'll be faced with a third and in inches. So just a lone field goal in this first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score, and we'll be back to South Florida after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Dolphins in possession of the football. But they've got a third and inches coming up, trying to keep the chains moving. Alright, here we go. Osweiler now off the bootleg. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That was well defended, and while it was a completion, it resulted in a loss of yardage. It's really, really hard for a running back to think to himself, I probably should have just dropped it and saved the yardage. It goes against the entire training that he's had his whole career. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. Back deep here, Andre Roberts. New York Jets offense coming back out onto the field. And this offense was really good last week against the Indianapolis Colts. Put up 42 points. And Sam Darnold, maybe the best performance of his rookie year, completed 80% of his passes, 280 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And how about the Jets on offense? Because of Darnold playing well, he is leading them to big-time point scoring, too. 30 points in back-to-back -back weeks for the first time since 2011. 
and they've won both of those games. That's pretty impressive. And Coach Todd Bowles, by the way, after the game said, this might have been one we lost a year ago, but now at 3-3, three and three, feeling good, they're on the uptick. And how about Jason Myers, the field goal kicker? A Jets record seven field goals. So that's terrific for him. They won the game, but you know down the road, they want to turn some of those field goal attempts into touchdowns. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Brady to throw on second down. Got his man, Robbie Anderson. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. On first and 10, here's Brady. And he hits turned it over the middle. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. On second down, here's Brady. It's caught by Quincy Anunua. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. They go play action here on first down. Anderson loses the football, and the Dolphins have got it. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Good starting field position for the Dolphins as they have it first and 10. They'll start the drive with Drake. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Encroachment, defense. 
So they got him coming up from his linebacker spot. And sometimes the position designation really doesn't matter. If you creep up to the line of scrimmage, you just have to look for the football. Make sure it moves before you do. So the penalty erases their earlier loss. Now it's second and eight. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be third down. But there's another example of why they haven't scored any points so far. I think it's time to abandon the run game, spread things out, and go to the air. It certainly can't be any worse than what they've done so far. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Hurry up, here we go. 319. 319. On third down, Osweiler. Got a man open. That's Devontae Parker complete. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to give the Need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Now let's go. 319. 319. They'll throw on first down with Osweiler. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now Osweiler on second down. Over the middle, it's Amendola. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. First and ten, it's Osweiler. And his throw here is incomplete. The safety, Marcus May, in there on the coverage. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Second and 10 now from the 27. Now let's go. Blue land. Second and 10 now. Osweiler. This will be caught inside the 10. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. First foray into the red zone for Miami. They've got it first and goal at the seven. Now let's go. Green 39. Green 39. 
Throwing again, Osweiler. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here, this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. To throw again is Osweiler. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Puts them in an unenviable spot here as they try again on third and goal. Now let's go. Green, 39. Again, Osweiler. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. Jason Sanders now for the Miami field goal. <laughs> Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins are going to tie the score at three. Well, maybe a nice psychological boost there just to get back to even with that field goal as we head towards half. Coaching 101 always says at halftime, play it like it's 0-0 on the scoreboard. Well, in this case, it's level, right? Same score each side. Just start over. Now you get the second half to play. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Nineteen seconds showing to play in the half as they come up here first and ten. They begin with a run by Crowell. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Go, go. 
One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. White 20, 380. White Brady now on first down. And nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. By 20! By 20! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And he's got his big tight end over the middle, complete. And with one second left, they get the timeout, and they'll have a chance to kick the field goal before intermission. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. He connected on his first, this from 41. And Myers able to knock it through. So if you like field goals, this is your game. 6-3, three, three field goals at the break. Myers now to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Here we go now. Boom, it. Drake will start the drive on the ground. Even with the nice move, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. I have to think a major focus of the halftime, Minks, had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. Avery Williamson not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon.
The Dolphins on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and 17. Hurry up, here we go. Blue line it. They go play action now, Osweiler. And he finds Stills, complete. A gain of 32 that time. I know they had good coverage downfield, but you have to wonder, on third and long like that, how does that happen that they can get that far downfield and complete a pass? you got to guard the sticks, understand where you are, so it's almost like someone fell asleep at the switch, and now that the play's been completed, they've got to dust themselves off on defense, pick it up, and figure out how to not let that happen again. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Now a play fake here on first down. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. All right, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. On first down, Drake. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. here, second and 11. Here we go now. 319. 319. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Well, that's the big drawback to this play. Even if somehow the quarterback pitches it, he's not immune to the big hit. In this case, he kept it and absorbed it anyway. Couple of plays sent him the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. Out of the gun, it's Osweiler. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there. And that's exactly what happened on that play. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. The kick by Sanders is good. And that will tie things up at 6-6. Six, six. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is taken at the three. 
And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So here's the Jets offense now as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You don't always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test the mental processes of the team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, it's amazing how fast they want to turn on the guy kicking the ball. But you need to keep his confidence up because how many times have we seen games where it comes down to the stretch? And guess what? You need that guy to make the big kick for your team to move on or to win a game. Make sure you keep him happy. Make sure you keep him comfortable. I'm sure you always treated the kicker nicely, though, right? You know, truthfully, I did. Good. I always did because those guys, they won us a whole lot of games. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. They'll run it again with Crowell. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. Hey, slow down, slow down. Hey, 20! Hey, 20! Hey. Brady now on first down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Anunwa the intended target. And it's second down. With that incompletion, let's discuss all the overtime games that we've had so far in the NFL. We've had nine of them, at least one each week. You know, week six, it was Miami and the Bears with the Dolphins getting the win. Yeah, and you know something? That's an NFL record because that record was set week five, an overtime game each of the first five weeks of the season. Now we're adding to the record, and I wouldn't doubt at all that we would get to seven weeks and maybe beyond. It's been a very competitive NFL season. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. The Jets on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and eight. Wait, 20! Wait, 20! Out, go! Shotgun now for Brady. And he's got a new one. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Holding offense. Well, that's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books. But now they have to make that up again, don't they? And this third down looking very tough after the holding penalty. Third and long. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. From the gun, it's Brady. That's caught right side by Anderson. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. 
tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. But there's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. So now here come the Dolphins. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. now Osweiler on first down throwing over the middle but it's incomplete the safety Marcus May in there on the coverage it's always a battle who's going to win on first down the offense or the defense let's face it if you've got the ball four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for they tried to throw for it there nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down Again from the 20 after the incompletion. Here's second and 10. Here we go now. Blue landing. Again on second and 10 now. It's Osweiler. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. The Dolphins on third down, two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Set, blue lining, blue lining. Ah! On the give, this is Drake. And he's gonna have the first down yardage to the 35. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Hurry up, here we go. Play action. Now Osweiler going deep here for Stills. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. Holding offense. Now that's one they hate. The ball's got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out, and they have to start over after the penalty. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Now let's go. 319. Now a handoff for Drake. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Second down, Osweiler. Wide open receiver complete. And it's a fumble. And it's scooped up by the Jets. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. Well, so much for the four-minute offense. They were trying to reduce the clock, get in position to win the game, and leave no time for them to come back and catch them. And guess what? They turned the ball over. Out, yeah. yeah, I mean, they had it all set up for themselves, and they let it get away. 
And New York set to take the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working and call more of that. So we've got a challenge. Our referee's going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Oh, I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball's shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that'll be considered a fumble. The battle in the trench is never more important than right now. This is third and inches. Now let's go. Blue Liney. Blue Liney. Following the fumble recovery, it's Osweiler. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. A Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Osweiler now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Now let's go. Blue line it. Throwing Osweiler. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Dolphin first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. All right, here we go. 319! 319! Running, it's Drake. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Automatic yeah, you're right. Down. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Now let's go. Three nineteen. Three nineteen. Counter play, Drake. Man, this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage. Back at the seventeen. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They face a second down, but they are in field goal range. to the ground this time with Gore and here he'll get it down to the seven give him 10 yards on the pickup and all of a sudden here it's third down in today's NFL when you get teams in long yard situations with your defense you're really going to go to your speed packages you're going to get smaller lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass 
so they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys, and that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them, and now instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. On third down, they'll run with Gore, and he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. As they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This for the lead in the final stages. Sanders' kick is good. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give him the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they score too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all oh, the time. They practice they? it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. Like 20, like 20. They'll look to throw. Hauled in by Anderson, left side. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards right off the bat in a first down. He's back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. Jermaine Kurz, 59 yards. And the Jets have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through. All the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. Jason Myers now for the extra point. Myers connects on the PAT. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Here's Myers now to kick it away. The return will come from Sonoris Perry. And yeah, not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. 
Here's Brock Osweiler and the Texan offense getting set to go. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Hurry up, here we go. 319. 319. Back to throw. He dumps it off to Drake. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Back to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Morris Claiborne, the former number one pick of the Cowboys there defensively. Well, these corners, I tell you, they've done excellent work all game long. They remind me of guys in the past who just said, hey, throw it out here a hundred times. Nothing good is going to happen. And if you throw it in the wrong place, I'll take it the other way. Down four late. Got to go for it here on fourth down. Hurry up, here we go. Boom, landed. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Tremaine Johnson. Parker, the intended target. On fourth down, that turned out like a punt. Maybe he was better defensively there just to knock it down. And you know they go over those situations. All right, fourth down, where's the ball? Where would we get the ball? But instinct takes over, and when it's in the air, they just go and get it. So it's hard to get on him for intercepting it, but the smart play would have been what you suggested. Knock it down and take over in a deeper position. And now out come the Jets. And they've kind of got a situation here. Still three timeouts defensively, so maybe you try to run a play. And if you do, you do it as safe as possible. And I think maybe even quarterback sneak. Take care of the football and make sure that clock starts to run before they call the timeout. We'll see what they do. The clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Here's a give to Crowell, and he'll work his way forward up to the 22. Now the Dolphins are going to take another timeout here as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field.
The Jets on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and seven. 20. Again, it's Crowell. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Brady will take a knee here, and that should just about do it. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it, and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done.